really diligent and passionate about making a difference in education. Uh, he has an innovative education programs in the US and Africa. Welcome again, Dr. Mecca. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. If you have seven minutes to uh, present. Okay, Tazeta, thank you for uh, inviting me. I'm sorry there's a background noise here. Uh, can you hear me well? Absolutely, we can hear you. Oh. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Just to give you a rundown of my uh, education background, I'm a graduate of Addis Ababa University, uh, majoring in pedagogical sciences, and I have uh, uh, another first degree in accounting from Asmara University, and I have a master's degree from Marshall University here in the United States in information system, and a master's degree from uh, Leeds University in England. In, in education and uh, my PhD is from uh, uh, the University of Adelaide in South Australia. So I have been in education for many, many years and uh, been uh, a teacher here in the United States for 21 years. And I've taught at Addis Ababa University, Asmara University and several other colleges in Australia. And currently I'm running an education center here in Ohio and uh, we, are, we have uh, virtual uh, classes teaching English to students in Addis and in Djibouti and there are other students in Europe as well. Most of them are of Ethiopian ancestry. Um, I'm uh, impressed by your organization and uh, I'm really motivated to work with you. As you also mentioned, um, my business has been, uh, uh, we have been in business for, for 10 years now and we have also been uh, approved by USAID and that's one thing I want to encourage you uh, to get your organization get approved because that's where we can get grants uh, apply for grants at least so we can work on that one I have uh, strong relationships with different institutions in Addis particularly with Addis Ababa University currently as you speak I teach two doctoral classes uh, uh, for the Institute of Educational Research at uh, Addis Ababa University. I'm also working with the Kotobe University of Education. We are doing several things with them and we're also very much into uh, designing, developing and uh, delivering uh, learning management uh, courses on learning management systems. I think that's one thing probably we can do. I know several people did mention how we can train um, students. I, I, I was I was in this meeting the very, the very first hour and then left and, and then came back again. So I've heard some of the issues that we have. And I think those are the things we can uh, uh, work together to improve the uh, uh, or at least help you achieve your, your objectives. So I just want to be brief, and then if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lega. This is really awesome presentation. And uh, thanks for your contribution to our uh, generation, our country, and our people. Uh, that's really uh, uh, imperative to you know everyone. Um, so your presentation was really uh, insightful. I hope everyone learned a lot from Dr. Nagas' presentation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up um, for Q&A if anybody has any questions. Uh, well, <coughs> we're here for you. I would like to ask Dr. Nagas, first place, thank you so much yeah, for accepting our, our invitation. With just one single call, we didn't know each other. It's Sebrahan that introduced me to you. It's really sometimes amazing that we don't know all these resourceful uh, people in our surroundings, especially with Ethiopian youth, Ethiopian scholars. I think we need to work more 
Dr. Negga, how's your schedule today? Can you stay a little bit longer? And also, I just wanted to know if you have any other commitments, how long can we discuss? Yeah, you are mute. You are mute, sir. I just wanted to know, like... 30 minutes. I can stay for 30 minutes. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to start by asking, like, how can we work together if you are leaving, if you don't stay for the discussion after uh, this um, uh, session? We want to know what's the best way to work with Yes Ethiopia. In Yes Ethiopia, we have more than 50,000 young people. Some of them are from remote parts of Ethiopia, from Gambilla, Hasosa, you know, from Jinka, from South Omo, from uh, Jigjiga, Samara, and the like. Also, a lot of them in Addis Ababa, in all the capitals also outside Ethiopia. What is the best way that we can establish a relationship, start working together? Because a lot of young people would have this question, how can I work with Dr. Nagga? What is the way? So please speak about that. And I'm very grateful. And thank you so much for what you're doing. Just listening to your bio is so inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Fukado. Um, you mentioned Chikjiga. So I'm originally from Chikjiga. Wow. So um, I have built a learning management system for, for Chikjigas. Um, this ecamel.net, you would see we have developed uh, content from kindergarten up to up to high school level. For instance, in math, we have developed math in Amharic, we have developed math in English, and we have translated the English math, which is basically based on the uh, common core standards here in the United States into, into Amharic. And we have also Amharic content. If you go, if you go to education.com, uh, we have several sites that's equipped with learning management systems. Because my, what I'm trying to do is, uh, as you can see, even uh, prominent universities in Addis do not have learning manage management systems. Most of them, but they are probably at the initial stage of building it. So I'm, I'm using learning. Uh, uh, Learn Dash as a learning management system and try to build uh, online and virtual learning on on that platform. So I think that would be one area where we can develop a learning management system for your users. And I know you have several experts in different fields, and uh, um, we can use that platform as a way to uh, to work together. I, um, I we can also do training. We can provide uh, training. I do give several trainings. I have uh, extensive experience in intercultural and intercultural communication. So we can uh, help the, the youth to to have some basic skills in communicating with people from different uh, linguistic and cultural background. Mm. So that would be another area that uh, we can help. Um, and as I said, we have really enough content in math and in language arts, which I we developed it in uh, past ten years here in my institute, and I would be more than happy to give for free if you have students that are there would be running courses, but other courses including getting domain and then uh, all that uh, can be uh, can take care of that. But we can also work as um, work together, you know, to get some kind of grant with, from USAID. Okay, that's mm -hmm. I believe that's very very important. And and then uh, as as we go further, uh, we look into the problems that arise and we try to tackle them, you know, from from different corners. We have uh, um, I have very international experience, as, as you said. As you uh, as you heard, so we will use my um, experience in the, in the business world as well. So, um, most important thing is is the willingness to work. So, one thing I really want to um, thank you for is that at this day and age, when our country is entangled in multi-faceted and um, multi-layered problems uh, when you're trying to bring all these diverse people together, that means a lot to me. 
So I think we have to go beyond what we see there are, and education is, is really a key problem. All we have is related to education. So if we are the pioneers in uh, tackling this problem, as one, as you said, you and I never met before, never know each other, but I always work with anyone interested to change the education landscape in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. That's what I have been doing for over 40 years, and I never get tired, and I would continue to contribute to the field of education because you call, I have one daughter, she's in medical school, a second year student now, her name is Abigail. For me, education means just like that. You mentioned the name education as if you have called my daughter's name. So mm -hmm. I, I listen to you very carefully. So um, I'm most happy to work with you, especially with the youth like you. I have also three employees. I have trained them online. They are all in Ethiopia and they work for me. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they do it online. I give them the training. We have enormous potential back home. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of tapping to it because these are young people. We just need a uh, way to show them. As I don't know if I mentioned this to you, I have done most of my degrees on scholarships. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm also a Fulbright senior scholar. I am a Carnegie African Diaspora fellow. I'm a British Council scholar. I'm overseas postgraduate research scholar. So I'm um, very well. Uh, and, and now I would also be English fellow. Maybe in a month or so, I'll get that. And then uh, there's another fellowship I have also applied and that would take me to add this to, to work. So just to, to just in brief, I think there are several avenues that we can work together. And I'm, I'm willing to, uh, to join in. Thank you. I'm super, super happy. I'm very sure <laughs> the others are also feeling the same. So yeah, God bless you. And I'm very happy that we met. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. We're so impressed uh, with Dr. Lekas, you know, contribution and of course, looking forward to his contributions, more contributions to the youth, to, you know, everyone uh, who would like to, uh, you know, grow, learn and grow. Um, I apologize. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. So what I'm going to do is, if possible, uh, Dr. Nagda, is that possible if, uh, you know, I know I see like a lot of questions on the chat box. Uh, do you mind actually uh, if they, like those people can actually connect you via LinkedIn? Um, and then if possible, whenever you get a chance, you can go ahead and, you know, um, answer their inquiries. That's if possible. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, I hope. Um, Tizzy, I would like to. Me. Tizzy, I would like to add that I can host Dr. Nagga during our weekly sessions on Saturdays. As you know, every Saturday at 6 p.m. Ethiopian time, we, we have a meeting, regular sessions. So, Dr. Nagga, we can arrange another time. I look like there are a lot of questions lining up. And myself have many questions, so I just need more time with you. So let's have another session, one of the coming Saturdays. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, Dr. Mega, that would be really, you know, greatly appreciated um, if you can join us for one of our sessions so that you can answer as many questions as possible. <laughs> yeah. um, unfortunately, we're really constrained in time today. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, again, I really apologize um, our audience. Uh, we're going to connect you guys. Don't worry. Uh, mm. Keep in touch. Um, we're going to connect you with Dr. Naka and other uh, professionals. And of course, if you have questions, you can always send it to uh, ESC Ethiopia's email address and then we can uh, address your questions as quick as we can. Well, um, if I know uh, I'm not, you know, it's just from my side, I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, question is to continue, unfortunately, because of time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, introduce you guys uh, with Sosena. Uh, Sosena is our uh, treasurer uh, of the board of directors for YES. Um, Sosena, if you're here, which I'm sure you're here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, let you introduce yourself and uh, go ahead.
ahead and uh, lead uh, the rest of the panel discussion. Thank you so much, and it was really awesome. Uh, you know, working with you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tezeta. Uh, I'm guessing everyone can hear me. Hello, I'm Sosana. Um, I am the treasurer for YES uh, USA team. Uh, my background is in user experience research, and I am currently working in uh, quality engineering. Um, I'm really excited to introduce you guys to uh, our panel uh, discussion members. Um, so that includes uh, Dr. Yiligan Fasa, um, Dr. Mary Willis, uh, Mr. Saifu Ibsa, Iyo Waldehanna, and um, representatives from the embassy in DC as well as Ron. So if you're here, please um, unmute yourself. And I think we can start introducing uh, our, our panel speakers in the next uh, seven minutes. Yeah, thanks, Osina. We have one speaker also, uh, Faisal. He didn't present in the morning. We have moved him to the afternoon session because he have like some active work in Addis Ababa. So Faisal is now in the room. So I just wanted to add that he's waiting. Thank you. Um, I apologize, Sina, again. Um, uh, we also would like to add uh, Dr. Barakat to talk about his, uh, you know, educational uh, business that he's uh, conducting currently. Uh, we talked about it, I think, uh, when we stick on the agenda before. I appreciate it. Thanks for your consideration. Yeah, sounds great. And let me also mention the theme of this panel discussion is experiences working globally um, and in Ethiopia and ways that we can continue forward. So maybe if we can start with Seifu, if you can introduce yourself in a minute or so, and then we can continue introducing everybody else. Thank you. Oh, myself, you mean? Uh, um, yes. Okay. Yeah, my name is Seifu Ipsa, and I have been involved with the uh, Hagaru's Yes Ethiopia team uh, for about uh, six months or so, a little more than that. Um, I have been very much encouraged by what he, ha he has been doing. Uh, since he started a few years back, uh, following him on LinkedIn. Um, it was quite a, ple a pleasure really working with him. And I was able to meet with him in person and, and establish a nonprofit organization here in the US. Um, it is really a pleasure working with every one of the uh, uh, board members. My involvement, if I may take a few more minutes, uh, uh, Sosana. My involvement with the Ethiopian youth goes back to 2005-2006 time frame. Um, I live in California. I've been in California for about 42 years. But back in 2006, as I was working on a couple of projects uh, in my birth village, a water project and, uh, and a preschool building uh, project, um, a young man is a he was a principal of the elementary school, took me aside and and said to me you know, a word that I would never remember. 95% of the students that pass eighth grade you know, become farmers in this village, in this area. If you can help us with that, that would be wonderful. So I, uh, that resonated with me and I decided to do something about it. So I spoke with my brother who was uh, um, retired at the time. He was working for Ethiopian Airlines. So together we decided to help out the kids that are passing the national exam of eighth grade and send them to a nearby uh, town where they can be educated. So we were paying for their rent, providing them with uh, with uh, in mat mattresses and closings and stuff like that. So initially my objective was to help just about 10 kids, and maybe the top 10 students, but he decided to take all 43 students that passed that year and ed educate them. So the next year it, it happened to be 100 and then they raised to 150 and then to 200, etc. 
So for the last 15 years, we've been sending kids to uh, nearby high school um, so that they can get educated. I'm happy to report that 98 of them graduated with a degree so far and still counting. And uh, there's also a high school that we built in my village. Uh, we built together my, with my brother and others uh, about six preschools and two elementary schools, about eight water projects. This has been uh, an ongoing uh, passion for me, coupled with compassion. You can have a passion, but if you don't have the compassion, you cannot do uh, much. But anyway, um, I got involved. My, my, I got involved with Yes Ethiopia because of my background with uh, the young, and uh, I'm so happy I'm doing this. A, a great man, a visionary, Bukadu, for all Ethiopia. We need many of you, like maybe about uh, if if we can get ten thousand Bukadus, we'll be very happy. The country will be very happy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm I'm done. So sinna. Thank you, Seifu. Uh, Dr. Mary, would you like to continue next and introduce yourself? Yes. Um, I'm uh, Mary Willis, and uh, I'm at Missouri State University. I'm a department head for sociology, anthropology, and gerontology. Um, do you want me to go ahead and explain um, how I became a part of this, or what, what's best? Yes, please, Dr. Willis. Go ahead and oh. tell us more. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, I have to say that my first connection to Ethiopia uh, came in graduate school. And it reminds me, and is a sort of repeat theme, about having relationships with people. But my uh, first day in, in my graduate program in, at Washington University in St. Louis, I had an Ethiopian uh, uh, fellow student who, who came to the meeting. We became very, very dear friends. And um, from that uh, day forward, we worked together on all kinds of projects. We both successfully defended our oh, PhDs. Yes. Um, Dr. Shamel Bayana uh, and I were, were uh, again, both PhDs in anthropology. We are now. And uh, Dr. Bayana went back to um, to Ethiopia, and at one point in time, there was a position open at University of Nebraska where I taught for 22 years, and I knew him and contacted him and asked him to to apply. So he came to Nebraska and and began uh, teaching. That was a relationship that came out of um, again the graduate school and friendship. While we worked together, we decided to apply for. Um, an international science education grant through the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And um, that, that was partly because um, there were at least six Ethiopian scholars at that time at University of Nebraska, and we felt this was really a very good thing to do to somehow connect uh, the, the um, programs at University of Nebraska with Ethiopia. So Dr. Bayana and I wrote the grant and uh, we were successful. It was to set up um, a study abroad program, an education abroad program. So um, we did that uh, in short order and I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, so uh, Dr. Bayana came to the US uh, for his PhD because he um, had finished a master's degree at, um, in Addis and he was uh, available to conduct some research when a scholar from the U.S. came uh, to, to look for some, um, some support. So he ended up working on a program in the Awash National Park, and it was uh, his biology background that let him uh, do that work. Um, and, and that is a good illustration, again, of making relationships and friendships. He had no idea that would lead to the possibility of a PhD in the future. But indeed, uh, when when the project was was over and needed to continue, uh, Dr. Bayana had that opportunity. I too got a chance for a PhD because I was doing a, a contract work in Madagascar, and I met my future um, advisor 
uh, in, in that project and program. Again, having no idea that the work I did would come, would lead to a relationship and then a PhD. So fast forward to uh, Nebraska. I can't remember exactly the year. It would have been somewhere around um, 2012. Uh, we applied, Dr. Vianna's in the US. We're working at the same university, having been good friends for a long time. Uh, we applied for this grant to go to Ethiopia. So we start in 2014 and um, we did um, education abroad programs, bringing U.S. students from University of Nebraska uh, to Ethiopia um, uh, 2014, 2015, 2016, um, 2017 and 2018. We couldn't uh, travel because Ethiopia had a state of emergency in 2016. So that stopped our work for two years, kept in touch with everyone, um, got back to Ethiopia in 20. 18 and 2019, then COVID hit. Um, and uh, so I, in, 20, in 2017, I decided I cannot let this education abroad program go. And I set up to go to work in, um, in Zambia. Same program, same kinds of ideas, same kinds of setup. And um, a story for all of this sort of ongoing description, but what I want you to understand is that uh, you never know how opportunities will come along. And when you get the chance to work um, on a project or a program, um, don't be discouraged that it might not be exactly where you hope to be. It could lead to something. So uh, again, we set up the program. We have this break in the program. And um, I, uh, did the program in Zambia alone, 2017, 2018. Then COVID hit and um, my colleague that I worked with in Zambia so very sadly got COVID and, uh, and died. And so I was without a colleague. And um, I thought about who do I know that has worked on this project? Well, I had a colleague in Hawassa, at Hawassa University, um, Alizar, Kira Belcora, and I contacted him and asked if I flew him to Zambia, would he help me uh, do this, this course in this education project? That has now turned into um, a, a permanent um, and long-term relationship, uh, both for the study abroad, which I'm now conducting out of uh, Missouri, but also um, it's a, a relationship for um, Alizar. He very well may end up um, in a, a graduate program, and he's made new contacts in Zambia. That could also be uh, for him uh, a possible relationship. Meanwhile, um, as we, um, just as COVID was happening, um, I had worked with Fike, and I had worked with um, another Ethiopian uh, scholar at Hawassa, uh, as well as Alazar. And, during our study abroad, we noted that in the coffee regions where we were working, uh, that uh, there were um, parts of the coffee cherry that were being uh, thrown out and they were causing environmental trouble. They had some nutrition in them. And so we wrote a grant, an internal grant, uh, to work on that project. It's still ongoing and has had a few hiccups because of the COVID. But um, I brought um, and had money to bring um, Fike and Alazar to the U.S. to work on our project uh, in 2020, I think 2020. And then again, um, we, we uh, mapped out the project, spoke to people. Um, they were in the U.S. I think a month or six weeks. They went home and uh, just before COVID hit, they came back again. Uh, before it was really problematic. Um, so, sorry, Dr. Marie, to interrupt you. Sure. Uh, can you keep it to one more minute and then yeah. we'll get yes, back to the question? I, yes. How much we're sharing right. your experience? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, anyway, they came back. Um, and in fact, that's now how both Fike and um, Amro uh, Tedessa 
got into University of Nebraska because they came on the coffee project and they were able to meet um, scholars. So all of these relationships are are, are uh, about working on a project, meeting people in a context and place where you might not uh, necessarily uh, have your goal met, but you're building skills and you're having opportunities that you may not know uh, will come in the future. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And then next, I'd like to invite Faisal to tell us about uh, your experience with remote jobs and the company you have. All right. Thank you so much uh, for the invite to everyone in Nebraska. Go Huskers. And I uh, forgot to thank you for uh, hosting this event. Um, how do I share my screen? Can I get permission? I do have a little presentation uh, prepared. Mm -hmm. I will give you a uh, All right. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Willis. You are the reason for why we are in US and how Yesitopia has started. And Faisal now is working with Yesitopia and he's supporting many young people to work from home in Addis Ababa. So both of you from Nebraska, from Missouri, uh, I thank you so much. There is no enough time. We also would like to discuss more if you stay, Dr. Willis and Alazar. Yeah, depending on your time. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And Shike, I think you launched, yes, Ethiopia out of my house. Exactly. That is on your bed. I was okay. in. <laughs> yeah, I'll just speak about that later. So I'm just kind of under time pressure. So. Yeah, but God bless you. Thanks so much. All right. Um, you never told me that part of the SCP. It was launched in uh, Missouri. Been no, Nebraska. it's not in Missouri. He's in Nebraska. Dr. Willis right. moved to Missouri recently. She was in Nebraska. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, also, since we are limited on time, I will go ahead and uh, dive right into this. Uh, like I said, Bukari, thank you for, you know, all the work that you're doing. Definitely uh, an inspiration uh, for all of us, including myself. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending this. Uh, so uh, briefly, I'm just going to be talking on the topic of uh, Ethiopia slash Africa's uh, potential in business uh, process outsourcing and uh, the opportunities that lie uh, ahead of us. Uh, so with that said, uh, before I even get into the, the topic that I'm here to talk about, why should you listen to me? Uh, why should you care? So, a little background on me. Uh, I was born and raised in Ethiopia until the age of 12. Immigrated to the U.S. Uh, at the age of 12 and lived here since then. It wasn't until uh, COVID 2019 that I went back to Ethiopia when uh, working remotely uh, became a possibility. Uh, so, I was working for a startup here in Austin, Texas that allowed us to go remote. So I decided to pack up, go to Ethiopia for the first time in a really long time. Um, and during my time in Ethiopia, I was, uh, you know, for us that are too accustomed to the West here or that are living here in the States, uh, we often get detached from uh, Ethiopia or Africa in general and uh, everything that's out there. It's easy even for us to get sucked up into what the media sells us on, uh, on Ethiopia or Africa. and where they are as an economy, as a country. And when I was out there, I was extremely surprised in terms of, uh, you know, people's ability to speak English, right? Uh, you know, these are basic things, but um, when you live in America for so long and you hear about the constant issues uh, in, in Africa, you forget uh, there's a completely different world out there. And um, so I was just extremely surprised by all the people I was meeting out there, the level of uh, education and hearing stories of people that are graduating in computer science or engineering and uh, different STEM fields that uh, were not able to, to find a job. So during that time, I decided to say, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to pack up, start a business here. And I definitely saw an opportunity for us to tap into the outsourcing uh, market because I have worked with um, outsourcing, uh, had worked with outsourcing in India and the Philippines which is uh, where a lot of the outsourcing started. But uh, before, you know, taking a big step like that and expanding into the U.S. or other markets, 
uh, I thought it was very important for me to get acquainted with the, the local market in Ethiopia and the local realities. It's easy to look at things from the outside and you know think everything is going to be perfect. So with that, uh, before thinking outside of the country, I thought it was uh, a good idea to start locally. So for the past two years, uh, I've been building Ambassade Solutions. As of today, uh, we have 10, 10 full-time employees as well as four contractors that we're working with. And we've worked with over 60 clients around uh, digital marketing as well as uh, IT solutions. And the whole purpose of that was to build a foundation for us to go ahead and offer uh, outsourcing services. Uh, the most, I think the, the most amazing thing that we have going for us right now is the fact that 100% uh, of our team is remote, uh, which has its own set of challenges. But as we continue to explore ways to uh, expand beyond Ethiopia, uh, I think it's important to take into account that uh, talent within Ethiopia alone or anywhere in Africa isn't just in Addis Ababa. I think there's a lot of emphasis that's being put on um, what's you know in the in the capital so right now we have team members in adama awasa and uh, across different regions which uh, you know i think that is setting up a great foundation for us and uh, setting a good example for uh, for the country in general all right so um why now why should we uh take uh, outsourcing as a serious uh, potential opportunity for Ethiopia as well as Africa. I keep saying that because I like to think of Africa, you know, as one big continent instead of just focusing on Ethiopia, uh, even though I know a lot of our audience is Ethiopian based today. Um, so uh, the first thing, why now? Uh, increased adoption of remote work. Pre-COVID, uh, there was definitely a few companies doing remote work, specifically in tech, uh, but it wasn't, you know, it, it was really like abnormal for somebody to say they work from home or uh, are hiring somebody overseas, it wasn't mainstream. So with COVID, that is something that uh, accelerated uh, remote working, which uh, is one of the reasons that sets us up perfectly to uh, dive deeper into this industry and see what we can do. Um, the, the second thing is uh, cost reduction uh, for anybody that's into economics or finance. I think what we saw the last de decade of low interest rates and all these startups getting millions of dollars in funding because money was so cheap uh, and uh, you know when the federal government is pretty much printing money at a low rate uh, you can spend a lot of money uh, pay developers at google 200 300 thousand dollars and just get away with it but as we've seen over the past two years uh, these companies are doing a lot of layoffs and starting to tighten up, tighten up their belt uh, because the cost is important and that's uh, Gonna, that's going to be a trend that uh, here at Ambassade we think is going to continue, uh, not only for some of these large businesses, but also these uh, small businesses that have to uh, stay competitive. Uh, cost reduction, I think, over the next few years is going to be something they take very seriously. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Faisal. Um, no please, if you can do one more minute and also oh, let man. people know how to get in contact with you, and then right. we'll go through our next and, few uh, other ones. Thank you. All right, yeah. Uh, so I will go ahead and share this presentation and uh, some some of the things that I uh, was going to discuss here. And so uh, in terms of, you know, why Ethiopia, why uh, Africa, uh, the amount of population that we have in Ethiopia uh, is extremely young and uh, affluent with the Western culture uh, and the amount of improving uh, infrastructure that we're seeing in Ethiopia is setting us up perfectly, I think, for an opportunity to uh, tackle this this market. Uh, some key challenges within uh, outsourcing, uh, you know, some of the AI stuff, uh, I think is going to have a lot of impact uh, on some of these jobs that we don't really know yet. Uh, quality control working directly in Ethiopia with Ethiopians for the past two years. Uh, there's definitely a lot of hands-on required than uh, I initially thought. Uh, and then the obvious ones, obviously, the regulatory and bureaucracy hurdles that you see in, in a lot of these African countries, as well as the ongoing uh, political and economic stability that uh, we're seeing. But um, with that said, going into the future, you know, uh, what are some things that uh, we should keep in mind? Uh, the most important thing, I think, is the work that Yes Ethiopia is doing, which is sustainable talent development, providing training opportunities and conferences like this, uh, marketing Ethiopia on a global stage. I think a lot of the perception about Ethiopia as well as Africa is the fact that we're poor, the fact that there is uh, corruption. And I think Africa generally just sucks at marketing ourselves. 
So how can we uh, change our perception and uh, enhance the business uh, opportunities? So I will wrap up here. Uh, my ask for you, if anybody's interested in collaborating, partnering, uh, even, you know, I'm looking into being a, looking for a co-founder. I've been a sole founder as of now, and it's really hard for me to be in two places at once. So if anybody's interested in this topic, I'm more than happy to, to discuss more with you. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Faisal Ramato, or uh, shoot me an email at Faisal at ambasciety.com. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. <clears throat> Thank oh, you so much, Faisal. Um, okay, so next we have Dr. Ilik al Saha, and then we also have Dr. Hewani and also Dr. Barakat. So let's just try to get everybody in in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Thank you. Thank you, Sosana. Um, I can go next. My name is Ilikal. I, uh, Ilikal, I should say. I'm used to calling myself Ilikal because to the American audience, you know, they don't know how to say Ilikal. Uh, when Dr. Willis was saying Dr. Bayena repeatedly earlier, I was thinking that she was calling me out because people call you with your last name here uh, in America. <laughs> Uh, anywho, I am based in the New York City metropolitan area. Um, I have studied at Addis Ababa University for my bachelor's and master's and recently completed my PhD at Indiana State University in technology management and human resource development. Um, so I was really inspired by, uh, you know, all the topics that were being raised this morning and everything that was being said, because I feel like I found people who are speaking my language and, you know, that's uh, principally what I work on. Um, in terms of professional engagement, I've been in the learning and development talent management sphere for, I want to say, the last 10, 12 years, not to date myself, but that's how long I've been uh, here. Um, and currently, I work for a global nonprofit called the Natural Resources Defense Council, and I am the director of talent management. Now, uh, coming to how I came in contact with uh, Yes Ethiopia, I was first introduced to Fakadu uh, through uh, LinkedIn, and I used to see all the posts that he would, um, you know, put on uh, LinkedIn. And I was really interested in, uh, you know, lending a hand to all. Uh, the contributions that he's doing, all other things that he's uh, carrying out. And um, I have to say, my belief that the future belongs to Africa, the future belongs to us, was reinforced this morning because, as you can see, there's a lot of talent, both in Ethiopia and outside of Ethiopia. And I felt like all of us needed um, a way to come together and to be able to contribute to uh, you know, the development of our country. Um, as you saw, there are many people who are very accomplished in their own rights, who have done a lot of stuff in this sphere. So um, I am confident that all of us um, would be very glad to contribute our knowledge and our skills and our know-how to the betterment of uh, the Ethiopian youth. Uh, so to say. So while prepping uh, this, so so now I'm not going to put you under time pressure. I'm going to patch up soon. Um, I was looking at some numbers. So what is Africa going to look like in say 2050, in about 30 years? So then about one in four of all humans would be living on the African continent. So we'll be 2.5 billion in Africa. And in Ethiopia, currently we're about 120 million and we are going to be 205 million by 2050, 30 years. So there is a good chance that most of us on this call will be able to see that day, you know, if we are lucky. So um, you know how resource staff we are. You know how our youth are not able to get employment opportunities today. So add some 85 million people to the mix and it is going to be a major mess unless we do something about it. So what Ricardo is doing and what everybody on here is trying to do is not something you know that we do because we can and stuff. It's because we have to actually do it. Otherwise, we just won't be able to sustain our society, our people the way we need to. Um, in 2050 as well, about 100 million of you know uh, our population is going to be in the working age of between 18 and 49 years. Uh, that is a lot of people. So we need to be looking into how uh, you know we are going to enable our people, our youth, to take their fair share from what is out there. 
um, I've looked at some of the presenters working in, uh, you know, their capacities to uh, encourage remote work, to encourage upskilling and so forth. I think all of those uh, should be things that we need to think about. But I want to leave with uh, three challenges to three different groups of people, I have to say. So for each and every one of you on this call, whether you are a young person in Ethiopia or you are a professional in Ethiopia or over here uh, working on this, I think working on upskilling everybody's capacity to do the work would be primary. You know, it could be something as easy as ensuring that people have the necessary communication skills, the necessary language skills, and the basic digital literacy skills to get the job done is super important. Um, I have also, like, for example, Faisal's uh, presentation uh, talked about uh, the future of BPOs in Africa. And I think that's also an important area to explore. Um, I am talking to a couple of people, actually, uh, in connection to my PhD project on how to really work on establishing BPOs in Africa. Because, as Faisal was saying, uh, India and the Philippines are the major players right now. And also, how can we actually use our power to enforce government policy and ask for resources for this to be encouraged in Ethiopia from uh, a tax perspective, from resource availing perspective, from infrastructure perspective, because the internet is also important. So these are all um, things that I'd be interested to work with partners on uh, to help use Ethiopia on, uh, because I really believe in uh, our youth our future and I see a lot of capacity even in this room to actually uh, make some moves and make things happen. So Definitely. I'm sitting back to you Sosna, thank you. Thank you so much Dr. Hidika. Okay next uh, Dr. Helena if you're with us if you can take a couple of minutes to introduce yourself and your work and then next we'll go to Dr. Barakas. Uh, uh, thank you Sosna. Uh, I apologize, I'm driving, so my camera is off, but I want to thank Fakadu. Uh, I've known uh, Fakadu and I refer to each other as brother and sisters. Um, I want to thank him for uh, just moving this this far. I bring uh, this uh, conversation to the other side. I'm an early childhood education. Um, Fakadu and I met after he posted a picture of an orphan in an uh, orphanage in Awasa. And that conversation has translated into us now working with that orphanage. What we basically do is really look at the holistic and comprehensive approach of early childhood education in Ethiopia. Similar to the youth unemployment, we have more than almost 60% of age eligible preschool children that do not have access to school. And I truly believe that also translates in how our, our outcome as a youth uh, sometimes is disenfranchised. Sometimes they don't have access to quality education. So our approach is if we catch them early and give them the highest level and the highest care and the highest guidance at birth, two, three, four, five years old, then when they become youth, when they become 12, 13 or 14, besides, you know, going to school, they can also become better citizen, kinder citizen. We, we can produce more people like Fakadu in Ethiopia, which we need a kinder, gentler, caring individuals. Uh, currently, we have a project in Deborah Tabor. We're building the first community preschool that will serve 450 people and a testament to Fakadu. Our civil engineer came from Yasikopia, a wonderful individual by the name of Muluk Anbeza, who is working with us. Uh, Muluk An also uh, uh, gives us a lot of advice. Uh, he's a, a great person to talk to and just to bounce ideas. Our other project is in Bahardar, where we created an outdoor play. Uh, we've also talked about volunteers doing a lot of work with early childhood education in Ethiopia because when we're looking at rural, and I think the past Isaac Yilik Al and Faisal talked about this too, we have to shift the focus from cities to rural because that's where the work need is, that's where the youth, the highest unemployment of youth are. Um, and then I also want to challenge everyone here, and especially those of us that live outside, to invest in the intellect of the youth in Ethiopia. We don't. 
we as Africans also have a very deficit perspective of our own people. We always think as uh, someone that doesn't look like us has better knowledge. But the truth is our indigenous knowledge, our cultural practices, our traditions, they give us so much um, surviving in Ethiopia right now. Just living in Ethiopia is a huge asset. So we have to be able to what a Fagadu does is look at the person for what they bring, not what we want to see, but for what they bring and utilize it in our in our work. OK, um, and then finally, with Awasa, one thing that I want to share because of Fagadu, we are working with Rohubot, the orphanage that he actually has been supporting uh, for many years now. Um, one touching story I would just want to share because it just shows how big his heart is. That group of children never went outside. And I remember, I think two years ago, Fugadu, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. we took them out for the first time, right? We took them to Awasa University where the children for the first time touched grass because most of these children are found on the, uh, well, they're abandoned. They're found on the street. And I'm talking about newborns a few days. And, um, and that, you know, that relationship and that, and it's just not one orphanage, it's many orphanages that he's involved in. And so that is what we do. Uh, you can check the website. I didn't have anything, but it's early child, early education, Ethiopia.org. Uh, uh, Fakadu has presented on many of our conferences and will continue to present. Uh, and I just really, really celebrate you, Fakadu. I, I really celebrate what you do. Because like you said, one person is a nation. When you impact one youth, you're impacting their family, their neighbor, their community, and you're showing them what it means to be kind and giving to another. So uh, I thank you. I hope so, and I've kept my time. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you, Dr. Hewani. And especially for mentioning uh, the volunteer work that we do and the connection that we have with the robot and other orphanages. Next, I'll give it to Dr. Barakat. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I am, I am beyond words to, to, to describe how, how I'm feeling about, you know, how the people you, you put together for Gadu to be on, a, on this panel and also throughout the day today. It's, it's a great example of, you know, bringing people together like-minded people, like Faisal said, and I, I am honored to be here. My name is Barakat Kindo. I, I I grew up in, in, in Owasa, Ethiopia. Kadu and I met 